Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. So I'm minding my own business last night, watching college football, had Tennessee uh, for 50 dimes, one easy, gave it out, no big deal, 50 grand, big deal. And these images, I'm not watching what Biden's speech, I didn't even know he had a speech, but all these images come out, and my God, the man looks like uh, Nazi Germany with a dash of Cold War Soviet Union with a dash of Dwight Schrute. No revolution is worth anything unless it can defend itself. With a dash of Hunger Games, just like the biggest dictator looking set ever. If you can't look at the photos and the imagery that came out from Biden last night, and without a doubt, it was the worst staging in the history of American politics. They always talk about the debate with what, Nixon, Kennedy, Nixon's like sweating, I don't know, I wasn't born. This man, our president, looked like fucking Hitler. I'm not saying he's Hitler, I didn't really even listen to a lot of the speech. He looked like fucking a caricature. He looked like Hitler. If you're a Democrat, and you can't admit how awful and how bad and how big of a misstep that was and almost laugh at it, then you're a demented brain. That's all I want to say. All right, guys. So Joe Biden's historically divisive speech, probably one of the most divisive speeches we've ever heard from a president of the United States in which he accused MAGA supporters or Trump voters of being um, a threat to democracy, they're a threat to this country. He specifically called out a group of people. He didn't say that the Democrat Party, okay? He wasn't talking about the politicians. He was talking about the people. He called the people a threat, right? And there are some people in the mainstream liberal media, a lot of them whom are actually cheering this on, right? They say he didn't go far enough. President Biden delivered one of the most forceful speeches of his presidency. This speech, it really felt like a reset, like a reset that the president, the administration really felt like they needed. A, a, a vintage Biden speech and something he he wanted to give. These MAGA Republicans who, as he put it, represent an extremism that threatens the foundation of our republic. Because I really thought this was a fascinating bit of presidential stagecraft. So I think he avoided being overly polarizing. It, it was a very, very patriotic speech. What Biden is basically saying is there are two big movements in this country. One is mine. I want to defend this democracy. The other is a movement that is not in favor of those things necessarily. I don't, I don't know who the it's not all Republicans, just MAGA Republicans are for. Like, I'm sure that there are some white supremacists who will vote with white supremacists who don't think they're white supremacists. We're happy that Biden didn't call them a white supremacist. But like, it's not for me. You know, and Charles, I, I have likened the the Republicans part, the Republican Party, the way that they have emerged now to the Dixiecrats before. I call them, you know, Dixiecrat Republicans. It's a Southern based party. It's a party that is, uh, purports things like white replacement theory, whether they do the, the, you know, the hardcore version that Tucker does on Fox or they do the soft version of it. Anti immigrant, very anti black people being able to vote. You know, you just go down the list. It is sort of a Dixiecrat party. The question is, is it a faction or is it the party? Yeah, I think, you know, it's very hard to split that hair. And I think what Biden is doing is, is you know, being a politician when he tries to do that. But I think that Democrats get kind of beat over the head and they kind of back away when they tell the truth. The truth, be telling the truth becomes a political sin. Uh, Barack Obama told the truth when he talked about people clinging to their guns and their Bibles. Hillary Clinton told the truth when he said, she said that there were um, deplorable people in the Republican Party supporting Donald Trump and they were, he was exciting a lot of racism and misogyny and bigotry. Those are true things, but Democrats get beat over the head because Republicans say, oh, you can't say that about actual voters. You can only say that about people who are running for office. You're punching down. However, uh, some people with some common sense seem to have gotten to Biden's ear about his speech and the tone of his speech and what it sounded like to the average everyday American. And now Joe Biden's come out here and he's walking back these comments. Take a look. All right. Hey, Mr. President, Mr. President, do you consider, Mr. President, do you consider all Trump supporters to be a threat to the country? No, everyone. Oh. Come on, look, guys. Keep trying to make that case. I don't consider any American American. I do think anyone who calls for the use of violence fails to condemn violence when it's used. Refuse to acknowledge when 
election has been won, insists upon changing the way in which the rule can count votes. That is a threat to democracy. Democracy. And everything we stand for, everything we stand for rests on the platform of democracy. When people voted for Donald Trump and support him now, they weren't voting for attacking the Capitol. They weren't voting for overruling the election. They were voting for a philosophy he put forward. So I am not talking about anything other than it is inappropriate and it's not only happening here, but other parts of the world where there's a failure to recognize and condemn violence whenever it's used for political purposes, failure to condemn the, 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 the attempt to manipulate electoral outcomes, failure to acknowledge when elections were won or lost. Yeah, the cognitive dissonance of the Democrats is something to behold, okay? It is one of the most amazing things I've ever seen, right? It's like one of the wonders of the world, right? The cognitive dissonance of the Democrats. Because Joe Biden here tries to walk back his comments uh, that, you know, Trump supporters are a threat to this country. And then he cites things like, oh, well, you know, people who don't want to accept the outcome of the election, which is something that Democrats don't want to do, okay? People who... Uh, want to try to systematically change the way that we vote, which is something that Democrats want to do, okay? People who call for the use of violence when they don't get their way politically, that is something that Democrats do. I mean, all the things he's talking about that are so-called threat to democracy, Democrats have done for the last, what? Ever since Trump was elected, they've done the exact same things at much higher rates. We've seen a lot more of it coming from the left than we've seen coming from the right. But yet these people are trying to lecture us on what is a threat to democracy and what's not a threat to democracy when they don't give a damn about democracy. I'm sick and tired of this, bruh. The mainstream media does not push back against these silly claims from the Democrats. Why does nobody ever push back and say, hey, you know, you talk about the threat to democracy and not accepting outcomes of election. Why in the world did the Democrats not accept that Trump was legitimately elected president. Why in the world were the Democrats um, not condemning the Roe v. Wade protester who were actively trying to uh, demolish and overthrow the Supreme Court, actively trying to intimidate justice? Why did you guys not condemn that? Why did you guys not condemn the BLM slash Antifa riots? Why did you not say anything about it? Because you cannot sit here and lecture me on this stuff when your party, you literally support it when it comes to people that you like. People that support Democrats, liberals, liberal causes. You're totally fine with political violence. You're totally fine with making whatever claims and pushing whatever conspiracy theories you want about the election when you don't like the outcome of the election. You're totally fine with trying to change the way people vote when it comes to pushing what Democrats want. Right. When it comes to pushing their uh, voting laws and their voting bills. In fact, again, you have some of these blue states that have stricter voting laws than the red states, but they're never called racist. Never called racist. Anytime the GOP or red states try to enact their own laws. Right. Oh, they're racist. They're trying to keep black people from voting. Meanwhile, there's no proof or evidence of that claim whatsoever. More black people than ever are voting in these same red states like Georgia in Arizona that have enacted these voting laws. But again, the mainstream media doesn't, they don't say anything about it. They don't say, well, why are you guys making this claim of voter suppression when there, there's no evidence? How are more people voting when there's supposed to be more voter suppression? They never caught out on this stuff. But with that being said, no, Joe Biden, you can't just walk back the comments. You can't just take them back because you said what you said. Stick by what you said and unless you're going to give an apology, right? Because... You didn't write that speech. Somebody at the White House wrote that speech. You read it and you said, yeah, yeah, this sounds good. <laughs> right. Calling Trump voters, voters, people in this country threats. Yeah, that, that, that sounds right, right. Right. That sounds like something that the president should do. We should have a background that looks bloody red. OK, with the military in the background. OK, something that looks like, again, a Hitler speech. Yeah, totally fine. We should definitely do that. You guys thought through this, you read it, and you said this was a great idea. Now you're walking it back because you're getting backlash. That's why you're walking it back because you know what it looks like. You know what it is. You know what you said. 
So unless you're going to apologize, I don't want to hear anything. I don't want to hear no walk back. You need to apologize. But he won't apologize. And even if he did apologize, I don't know if people should accept it at this point. I don't know if we should accept it. This guy is the most divisive president in history. The Democrat Party is the party of hatred and division. That's who they are. If speeches like this don't prove that to you, I don't know what will prove it. They don't like half of the country. They hate half of the country. They do. And they tell you at every single turn, whether that's the Democrat Party themselves, the President of the United States, or the mainstream liberal media telling you. Joy Reid just said she thinks that the Republican Party is like the old Dixocrats, right? They have no problem comparing people to Confederates, racists, <laughs> Dixiecrats, people, again, that are objectively deplorable and horrible people in history. They have no problems whatsoever making those comparisons. While the President of the United States, again, is giving a speech to a backdrop and a tone that, again, sounds like something out of Nazi Germany. Looks like something out of Nazi Germany. But hey, you guys are the semi-fascists, right? Not the Democrats who push the lockdowns, you know, who are against free speech, right? Who are taking away personal liberties and rights. Nah, not them. It's you guys. You're the semi-fascists, right? Again, absolutely incredible stuff, man. Unbelievable. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.